<laughs> from the Barcelona Cyber Computing Center. And so I, I'm discussing this this numerical structure called tensor networks, basically formed by by tensors, which are these these little dots, and then the connection, which are these edges. And and my purpose here is to explain that actually these manipulations on on these numerical tensors or, or you know, numerical structures formed by tensors are equivalent to simulating a quantum circuit. And the good thing is that actually manipulating these structures is very convenient using uh, like uh, distributed workflows and, and HPC systems. So basically, we have the perfect tool for addressing this this computational hard problem. Okay. So basically, what we are going to do is to uh, convert any quantum circuit into these numerical structures called tensor networks, and then we are going to perform a simulation um, operations over these tensors that are supposed to be equivalent to operations on the quantum circuit. So basically, we have an, a completely uh, homology between the classical and the quantum uh, process using these structures. The good thing is that um, with this, we can go for, uh, we, these, are, these structures are very flexible. We can simulate a large number of qubits for very, uh, with circuits with low depth or a very uh, deep circuit with a small number of qubits. There is a trade-off between the circuit depth and the width. In the worst case, of course, this is exponentially hard because uh, it's equivalent to the representation of, of a state vector in, in the quantum simulation uh, picture. But these structures have the benefit, besides this flexibility, the, that they can be approximated. And there is a lot of work done basically from the physical uh, physically oriented community because there, there are underlying physical principles that allow us to perform good approximations on these tensor networks, meaning that actually we can simulate to, an to a degree of approximation very large quantum circuits. So what we do is we take a quantum circuit that we want to simulate and in, in a trivial operation, we com convert the circuit into a tensor network, which is depicted here on, on, the, on the right. And then everything that we perform over these tensor network, all the operations are totally equivalent at the measurement principle that, that uh, finishes the quantum uh, circuit on an on a experimental uh, setting. And also they have some benefits for particular magnitudes that you want to calculate. Normally you don't want to have access to the full uh, collection of measurements, but only for a particular set of operators. And this is very convenient in this, in this picture of the tensor networks. And the good thing is that these, these structures as, as they are operated, um, can, can be like very efficiently parallelized. And this is very, very good in, in our setting. So um, there are intermediate operations that we have to perform that are hard. So the problem can be very, very hard, of course, because it's totally equivalent at, at, to the simulation of a quantum circuit. But um, first, we need to find a, a, an optimal contraction path which means that in order to reduce the complexity of this tensor network and, and to obtain the result of the, of the simulation, we have to start contracting tensors, just operating neighboring tensors according to the connections that there are in this tensor network. And finding the optimal path is, is already hard. It's already a hard problem. Okay, So that, that's a different, different uh, problem to the contraction itself, which is already hard. But we can find good approximations also to this problem with heuristics, and, and they are not so expensive. And then once we have a clear ordering of the contraction operations, then we perform the contraction itself, which can be performed in parallel in, in multiple nodes. And then uh, we can still perform these operations for, for the approximation uh, distributedly. So this is very also convenient. And at the level of the single node operations, this can be used uh, using acceleration. So um, nuclear operations that are done on small sets of tensors can be accelerated using GPUs. Our approach to this problem is to develop a library called Rosnet, and 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 uh, like a lot. I mean, there is a lot of work happening right now in supercomputing centers dealing with this problem. And our approach is to use um, a supercomputer in order to manipulate these tensor networks. Uh, we find this suboptimal contraction path using heuristics, and then we perform the the operation of these tensors in in, in distributed way. Whenever a single tensor doesn't fit in, in a single node memory, we slice or we uh, just like um, make a smaller components of this tensor uh, fitting into a single node for operations. And then uh, we use GPU acceleration by defining uh, um, properly uh, just tasks oriented to, to this uh, uh, GPU uh, implementation. So 
underlying this, um, we have to keep in mind that each uh, quantum circuit is different. So we rely on an automatic um, uh, parallelization method or runtime uh, developed uh, at, at BSC and, and, and other places called PyComs, which allows us to just focus on the on the define, definition of tasks and then relying on PyComs to organize the execution on, on, on real time of, of this collection of tasks. And what I'm showing here is a is a is an execution graph with the dependencies marked as, as these links that will tell you which tensors have to be waiting for the resulting operation of previous contractions of the tensors. And analyzing these uh, circuits, uh, or these, these graphs, we can see the, the level of complexity of, uh, of the simulation of a given circuit, because there, there is uh, different uh, um, complexity related to each circuit, and some of them will allow uh, an efficient representation in terms of this parallel uh, computation, and others will have a strict dependency of, of data, making the simulation uh, very, very hard. Uh, some of these tasks will be performed on, on CPU and some of these will be performed on, on GPU whenever available. But this is executed and, and, and defined at runtime, which is very convenient as, as we run simulations of, very, of, of a huge diversity of quantum circuits. And just to finish, um, I want to emphasize how useful this approach can be in the next years to simulate quantum circuits. And this is, I think, very important for designing better quantum algorithms. And also to understand better what what these uh, like uh, like current currently available quantum devices um, can be can be uh, offering, and then uh, of course tensor networks are not like a like a like a like a golden tool because they in the worst case they would require exponential resources, but on the average case they they may outperform a, a, a brute force approach on, on the simulation of quantum circuits. And also besides that, they are allowed to the approximation, which is very convenient for some particular uh, problems where there is, let's say, uh, a small amount of correlations, quantum correlations inside these quantum states. Uh, besides these tensor networks have applications in many other fields, um, meaning that these exactly the same tools can be applied to other not so quantum problems like, like um, um, fluid dynamics or, or classical machine learning. And then um, I, we strongly believe this is probably the, the final uh, conclusion that this is uh, the, the perfect tool for studying quantum states in the general case for heterogeneous and upcoming HPC architectures. I leave here some of the references of, of um, like uh, auxiliary libraries that we use in our work and, and to uh, references. This last one is, is the one presenting in detail this, this work and this library. So thanks a lot.